After the execution of their father, Charles and James Stuart moved to France. They lived there for 10 years as the guest of their cousin, Louis XIV. Charles and James didn't stay in France by themselves. A small group of very, very loyal supporters gathered around them. These people became known eventually as the King's Guard, and in this picture you can see them escorting Charles's carriage as he rode back into London. These were the King's lifeguard, literally his closest and most trusted supporters and advisers. Charles's coronation was a moment of jubilation for the aristocracy in England. It marked the restoration of the natural order as they saw it, and hopefully for them business as usual. Unfortunately for all concerned, Charles very quickly proved to be an absolute failure as a king. He was lazy, he didn't care, he, the only thing he really cared about was money and women. He, over his lifetime, I think, had 14 illegitimate children, uh, no legitimate children, but 14 illegitimate children with, I think, 14 different women. Uh, he'd also, when he got crowned, promised to rule as a good Protestant monarch. Uh, however, on his deathbed, he converted back to Catholicism, which I think it gives you a measure of him. He wasn't to be trusted. This is the Earl of Rochester, and he famously came up with a description of Charles, which went like this. Uh, restless he rolls from whore to whore, a merry monarch, scandalous and poor. And this fellow is Edward Hyde, who was Lord Chancellor at the time, in charge of the day-to-day -day running of the government on behalf of the king. He found Charles's attitude so poor, he said it, to friends, it made him despair of his life. The king was so lazy, so dissolute, the Lord Chancellor felt depressed, suicidal even. That was th the effect Charles's kingship had on those closest to him. So to sort of round this portrait of Charles II off, I want to tell you about two members of the lifeguards, two of this ultra-loyal band that went and lived with him in France while he was in exile. The first is Abraham Cowley. Abraham Cowley is the first person to have written about cocaine in English. He wrote poems about it, celebrated it, um, talked about its virtues. And to give you a flavour of how these people enjoyed themselves, I'm going to read you um, a, an extract from Samuel Pepys' diary. This concerns a man called Lord Sedley, who was not a member of the lifeguard, but was part of the royal entourage. So Sedley appeared naked on the balcony of what was called the Cock Inn, overlooking Bow Street in London. According to Pepys, there he began to enact all the postures of lust and buggery that can be imagined. He continued by abusing the scripture, delivering a mock sermon in which he declared he had such a powder to sell as should make all the cunts in London run after him. The onlookers were then witnessed as he took out a glass of wine and washed his prick in it and drank the king's health. His finale was to extragramentize, which I guess just means shit, all over the crowd beneath him. Sedley was actually fined £500 for breach of the peace. He complained to Charles he thought he'd been the first man that ever paid for shitting and Charles II happily lended him, lent him the £500 to pay the fine. So apart from Abraham Cowley and his coked up friends, who else were members of the lifeguard? Well, there's one guy in particular I'd like to draw your attention to. This is Captain Robert Holmes. Holmes is remarkable because by himself he managed to start two wars. Uh, the Second and Third Anglo-Dutch Wars were both began because of the actions of Robert Holmes. And you might think that would stretch his friendship with Charles II a little bit, but actually it was probably the other way around. He started those wars because Charles asked him to. Charles made a number of secret treaties and arrangements with his cousin Louis. One included him returning England to Catholicism. Uh, another included him getting a yearly pension from Louis. So basically the King of England was an employee of the King of France. And another part of these secret arrangements seems to have been these wars with the Dutch. If these two Protestant naval powers were slugging it out, um, it meant Louis had a much better chance of defeating the Dutch on land. The lifeguard were a small group of fanatically loyal men-at-arms. They included Robert Holmes, the warmonger, and... Abraham Cowley, the first man to write about cocaine in English. And I think you can understand with friends like these, it's probably no wonder that Lord Clarendon, who was responsible for government, felt like topping himself. Charles II was not a man fit for, for ruling a country. And I really think this is exactly the sort of thing we should be taught in school. If you'd like to find out more, there are a few other videos on this channel, and I'd really like you to read my book, Architecture of Power. Thank you for listening.